Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. First of all, apologies for the audio quality. I'm recording this on my laptop while I'm out of town, but I wanted to present to you uh, this program that I've created for video stabilization. I've uploaded the source code to GitHub, and you can find the link in the video description. It uses Python and NumPy and OpenCV as dependencies. You can download the source code and try it out yourself. Basically, this is going to form the foundation for tracking uh, with the next version of my telescope tracking software, which I'm currently in the process of porting to Python. That will allow me to support a little bit more uh, advanced tracking method like this, which is based on feature detection as opposed to simple color and intensity detection, which is what the previous version of the program used. So my previous telescope tracking software simply tracked rockets and other bright, fast-moving objects based on their intensities. But that's not necessarily good enough. There are certain situations where it really needs to track based on the shape of the object. Obviously, if you have a bright white flame in the video viewfinder and that rocket is producing a bright white contrail during the day, the tracking box can actually migrate its way down the contrail because it can't tell the difference between the flame and the contrail. And so that's obviously not ideal. So this will solve that problem by actually tracking the shape of the rocket and its flame. So let me show you how this works. It's a simple command line interface to start it up. Uh, you need to install Python, OpenCV, and NumPy. And there are videos all over YouTube describing how to do that. If you guys want me to make one, I can make one. But that's sort of a video unto itself. Bottom line, once you've got Python installed, you execute Python scripts by typing Python space, the name of the script. Uh, if you've downloaded this from GitHub, it should just be videostabilization.py. Uh, and then you enter the file name that you want to open up to stabilize. It can open up a wide variety of file names. And then you uh, add another space and type in a four-digit code for the codec you want to use to encode the output file followed by a space, followed by the uh, file name extension that will go with that codec. So, for example, a DivX file is an AVI file, so DivX and then space AVI. If you want to do uh, WMV files, it'll be um, WMV1, 2, or 3, and then space WMV for the file extension. So you can find the file codec codes over here, and I'll also include this link in the video description as well. So you can see DivX is here. Uh, if you scroll down, WMV is here. In fact, there's various versions of WMV available. Uh, and it can open all these and encode all of these. So these should all work. I haven't exhaustively tested it, but uh, I have tested some of the major ones, and they do seem to work. So uh, you can try codes from this page right here. So once you've entered that, just hit enter and it will load up the video file. Now you've got a cursor and you can select a box around the target that you want to track. So click from the top left and then hold and drag down to the top or down to the bottom right and release. And that generates this green box where it's currently tracking on the payload fairing of the Falcon Heavy which is getting ready to launch in this video. Now, you will notice it will still undergo some migration uh, as the rocket launches. It will tend to lock on to areas that are high in contrast. For example, the grid fins uh, on the rocket, and you'll see that here in a moment. But it will tend to stay with the rocket pretty well, much better than simple color or intensity detection would. Basically, it's looking for a local minimum of difference from the reference image. And it's also updating that reference image over time it weights the previous knowledge of what the reference image looked like 90% and adds in the current frame at a 10% weighting. It also looks at the confidence it has in determining whether the current object it's tracking is the correct object. And it requires a, th a certain threshold. I've got the threshold currently set uh, to 90% confidence or 10% error maximum. And so if you look at the command line, it's currently spitting out a couple of numbers. One number is the uh, percent error from the reference image. The other number is the frame number. So you can see it's migrated down towards the grid fence, but it's locked onto that, and it is following the rocket as it goes up. Now, if it loses sight of the object for any reason, and it's 
not confident uh, that it's locked onto the right object, it will stop in its tracks and ask for user input. You can either designate a new target, or you can simply skip that frame by pressing S. You can even stop it right now at any time by pressing S. So if it starts to go off target but it thinks it's still locked on, you can stop it in its tracks simply by pressing the S key and then redesignating the target as needed. I noticed when tracking Falcon Heavy that the thruster firings from the boosters after they did their boost back burn towards LZ1 and 2 tended to throw it off because the boosters were quite high up and far away and quite small in the view and the thruster firings would produce large gas clouds and that confused the heck out of it and there's really not much I can do about that. Uh, it's looking for features and so when that feature suddenly changes in size very rapidly it doesn't have time to learn the new shape. So I just dealt with, dealt with that the best I could. So you can sort of play with it uh, and select slightly larger or slightly smaller boxes. Obviously if you select a box that's way too small it's not going to be specific enough but if you select a box that's way too large on a target that's way too small, the background, the blue sky or what have you, will make up too much of the signal of that image and it won't necessarily track properly. So it's gone into the cloud now and it knows it's lost sight of the rocket and it's asking for my help. So I can skip a frame just by pressing S. You see a red box momentarily appear uh, and that indicates that it hasn't found the object and it still needs help. And so I can give it help by creating a new box. And so once again, uh, at the moment you need to click from the top left and drag down to the bottom right. I'll probably change that input uh, method later when this goes into a real-time fracking uh, type system. Also, one other thing I'll change it when it goes into real-time is it, it, it's currently processing these as color frames, but that's just uh, uh, way more data than it really needs to process for real-time tracking. I've made some concessions here for the fact that this is a program for processing videos offline, uh, you know, not real-time, but um, ultimately it will be pro processing on the grayscale data. So once again, it goes into the cloud even thicker now, and so now it's not confident that it's still locked onto it, so it's still asking for my help. Um, so I can, again, I can choose to skip frames until it comes out of the cloud, or I can continue to track on what's left of the frame, uh, what's left of the flame of the rocket until even that is obscured too much. So you can see how that works, uh, and I'll also be uploading a video of my Falcon Heavy launch stabilized uh, with that footage stabilized using this program. So I hope you guys enjoy that, and uh, hope you uh, find the program useful. Let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Clear skies, folks.